Ça me dit Ramel, ça va être à vous. D'accord. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for taking the time to attend uh, this uh, year-end presentation of the members of the of the Richbour. From uh, the Richbour uh, side, we have uh, today Boris de Richbourg, uh, de Richbourg, who is uh, a board director and in charge of the activity of military services. We have also Thomas de Richbourg, who is a board director and in charge of household waste collection. And we have Pierre Condelier and uh, his uh, the group CFO, and myself, Abderrahman El Aufir, I am the CFO, uh, CEO deputy. Okay, after a year that has been impacted with the pandemic last year, this year has been very good for the group, uh, and we had a very strong uh, financial year. Uh, we have uh, uh, achieved uh, in increases in volume, increases in margin, we have uh, our cost base under control. Uh, Spain last acquisition that we uh, achieved in December 2019 has been one of the best contribution to the group. OK, and we have also a continued and improved uh, results for the multi services activity and the household uh, waste collection. Uh, other significant uh, elements is the, the leveraging. Our debt has gone, it has decreased by 145 million uh, euros, and we are still working with the competition authority in Brussels to achieve the acquisi acquisition of ECOR, and we are expecting you know, and something by the year end uh, from the from the competition authority. I will now leave the floor to Pierre Condolier, who is going to go into the financial uh, presentation for the whole group. Pierre, it's to you. Thank you, Abderrahman, and welcome to everybody. And we have a large audience uh, tonight, uh, either through Teams or through uh, a uh, phone line and I would like to ask uh, to the people who are through the phone line to put on mute uh, because we, we are hearing some uh, nasty noise. So please for the one who are uh, uh, through the phone, uh, put on mute. Uh, otherwise I will have to, to shut down the phone line. Um, you can ask some question only through the chat uh, which are uh, which is uh, on the um, and uh, through teams and we will answer the questions uh, which has asked through uh, the chat uh, at the end of the presentation. So uh, the revenue for the year 2021 increased by 46.8%. Uh, the turnover is a 6.6 billion euros. Uh, the current EBITDA is 388.2 million euros which is an increase by 114.6% uh, uh, or more than 200 million increase in one year. Uh, if you go through the PNL, you see that until the EBIT, we keep this uh, uh, 200 uh, million euro advance uh, in improvement compared to last year. Uh, because uh, the depreciation is fairly stable and we have uh, very few uh, exceptional or non-recurring items this year. And the net income is uh, 164 million euro uh, attributable to the shareholders of the group, which is a 716% increase uh, compared to prior year. Uh, how uh, did we achieve these results? Uh, first, in the environmental services uh, for the recycling, we have uh, more volumes than last year. You will see that we have 25.5% increase in volumes for ferro scrap and 13.4% uh, increase in volumes for non ferrous metals. Uh, we will come um, a little more uh, in detail uh, after that, but uh, uh, what we can say, uh, there was a strong demand for ferro scrap uh, all year long, um, in, in particular, a strong use of electric art furnace in the context of restart of economy after 2020 lockdown. Uh, and of course, electric art furnace uh, is more flexible than high furnace, 
and they restarted uh, more rapidly than high pharmacy. And there was uh, the beginning of the year in particular. Uh, I would say uh, everybody wanted some steel at the same time and uh, electric art furnace was more able to to respond to this uh, uh, sudden demand and there was a sharp increase in, in prices. Uh, Turkey also was a good uh, contributor to the to this uh, strong uh, demand uh, for ferro scrap and uh, has kept, kept prices at high levels during uh, the year. Uh, another uh, important matter is that we, we, we see that there is a greening of steel uh, in the context of a uh, fight against global warming, um, people want more green steel, either more uh, steel which is made through the electric arc furnace process, or uh, even the blast furnace, they input more uh, ferrous scrap into the, the furnaces, which reduces their greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, Non-ferrous metals have also increased uh, over the year, in particular over H2. Uh, we have a unit margin which have improved significantly, both for ferrous and non-ferrous, in the context of price increase, and they have reached uh, high and maybe uh, very high levels. Uh, the rich book Espana, which is con uh, consolidated for the first time over a full year, was also an excellent contributor to the profitability of the group. Uh, 48 million EBITDA over the year uh, and testifying the group uh, ability or capacity uh, to integrate targets. And our uh, operating expenses, uh, they, replain, they remain very disciplined. You will see uh, in a few pages, our cost base has uh, not increased significantly despite the increase in, in volume. In the service to municipalities, uh, the results also improve. We have more revenue and uh, improvement on the contracts. And on the multi-service, we will come back to that uh, later. Uh, cleaning business increased uh, by 12% in France and 17% in the uh, Spanish Portuguese uh, area, driven both by organic growth and uh, additional services can I ask these people who are on the phone line to put on mute, please? Uh, driven by uh, uh, specific needs also from customer in the COVID context. Uh, the good news also is that we have a recovery uh, from aeronautic service uh, over H2, uh, which improves the EBITDA over the year. Uh, I would say that this recovery is uh, earlier than expected. Um, the board of directors, which took place this morning, decided to propose to the AGM to pay uh, 32 cents uh, dividend per share, which makes uh, 51 million euros, which is a 29.3 net income payout ratio and a 3.5 dividend yield uh, compared to the market cap at the end of November. So this... Uh, Page seven uh, was uh, six was a bit of a summary. We will go a bit more in details into each of the division. Uh, for the environmental services, we have a revenue which increases by 68.6%, and EBDA which is 338.5 million euros, 12.3% uh, of the revenue, and increased by nearly 200 million compared to last year. And you see that we have no, uh, hardly any uh, non-recurring items. Um, we already spoke about the increase in volumes. Um, profitability was significantly impacted by improvement in unit margins. Um, we have also a good performance of, uh, I would say, all our downstream aluminium activities, floating, refining. Uh, and we also uh, believe that there is a shift towards more demand in recycled materials. Uh, I already spoke about that. We also secured after year end the renewal of our main WIS uh, Detroiser uh, treatment contracts with uh, the main uh, customer.
So you see that we have a 25% increase in uh, ferrous scrap, 13% increase in uh, non-ferrous metals, but the increase uh, on in the revenue is more significant than that because prices were significantly higher. You have on page uh, 30 of the presentation, because which is available on our website, a curve uh, on the prices, and you will see that the prices they were uh, increasing, I would say, all year long, and uh, the average prices is uh, much more higher than last year, which make a 68% increase in revenue for the recycling division. Um, page 810 is a bridge uh, from the EBITDA uh, from 2020 to 2021. You see, uh, we, we made a specific pillar or brick, I would say, for Spain contribution. And all the items which are on the left page, uh, part of the page, are uh, before paid, uh, Spain. Uh, the gross margin increases by 174 million euros, more than 100 million for ferrous scrap and 71 million for non ferrous metals. We have 11 million uh, increase in um, service revenue. And you see in orange, we have few additional costs, uh, 12 million for staff cost. We had um, last year some uh, uh, part-time unemployment, which was subsidized by the state. We do not have this this year, so it makes an increase in the region of 4 million in staff cost. And we have also more variable uh, staff uh, cost um, uh, linked to the improvement in results. Uh, with a 25% increase in uh, volumes, we have only 3 million more energy costs and 7 million more uh, maintenance and repair costs. Our cost base was very disciplined. You see that the improvement of Spain is 33 million euros. Um, and on the service to municipality side, we have 4 million improvements, which comes from uh, the renewal of Canadian contracts and two millions, uh, which comes from the fact that we have disposed the control of our water treatment activity, which we are loss making. It makes a two million improvement. Uh, I will give the floor now to Thomas de Richbourg, who will speak about the development in public sector service activity. And maybe I will uh, translate. Uh, uh, Thomas, you make as you want, either in uh, Ok, bonsoir à tous. Alors, simplement pour résumer que nous avons fait une très belle année avec le service aux collectivités, puisqu'on a renouvelé l'ensemble de nos marchés de la ville de Paris et d'une très grosse agglomération en Ile-de-France qui s'appelle Pleine Commune. Une autre également dans la région normande. Et la totalité du volume de chiffre d'affaires que nous avons gagné s'élève pour la France et le Canada à 400 millions d'euros. So, uh, Thomas said that uh, they made a very good year in public service sector, service to municipality. They renewed all the Paris contracts, uh, which would give six years visibility, and also in pleine commune. Uh, they have gained some new contracts in Normandy. And uh, the backlog of what was, a, it's not a yearly revenue, but the backlog of the contract which we have secured over the year is uh, for, uh, 400 million euros. La stratégie que nous avons avec le service aux collectivités est de proposer un nos services uniquement aux villes qui ont fait le choix de s'orienter avec des notes techniques plus importantes que l'offre financière. On a vraiment une offre très qualitative et on veut gagner de l'argent avec ce service aux collectivités. Donc l'ambition que nous avons, c'est de se positionner sur des marchés qui avantagent le candidat d'un point de vue technique plus que financier. Okay, the strategic strategy of the of this activity is to be selective in uh, tendering to contract uh, only on contracts which prize the technicity, the quality of the services the different services compared to the competitors, uh, a bit premium, I would say, which offer technical uh, improvements and uh, which uh, make, which gives, uh, which enables the company to make money. Uh, there remains something at the end, at the bottom line. 
Et nous développons également le Canada qui, depuis 2014, ne fait que de progresser et en termes de chiffre d'affaires et en termes de résultats. And the Canada was established in 2014, and since the inception of this subsidiary, the revenue and the results have been increasing each year. Et les résultats que nous avons eus cette année vont perdurer sur plusieurs années, car on a renouvelé pratiquement la totalité de nos contrats et on exploitera ces contrats sur des durées de 5 à 9 ans. So the, the results, uh, in particular in Canada, but I would say also in France, are very predictable because uh, these are multi-year long contracts and uh, all these contracts are uh, secured for five to nine years. Merci beaucoup. Um, so we'll go now uh, into the multi-service uh, results. Uh, the revenue in the multi-service increased by 4%. The EBDA increases by 17% uh, and stands at 51.4 million euros, a 5.9 5 ratio uh, uh, EBDA to revenue, which is the best ratio ever uh, for this division. Uh, there is no uh, non-recurring impact this year, which makes a significant improvement in, uh, in EBIT by 140 million, 140% with an EBIT of 26.1 million euros. I hand over to Boris de Richbourg, uh, who will explain the main feature of this year in the multi service. Yeah, hello. Uh, thank you, Pierre. Uh, the two main activities that we can say where we did well uh, would be first the cleaning industry, uh, because we did uh, an increase of 12% uh, in France, but we did as, as well in Spain and Portugal quite well in organic growth. And because of the COVID, we had uh, quite a lot of uh, additional services, which is quite good uh, in turnover on, or even in, uh, in margin as well. Uh, so that's the main activity in turnover. The second activity where we could have some problem because we did have a, a low activity in 2020 was the aeronautics part, which is much better now. We did, uh, I think, the good choice with the union on social parts in uh, 2020 uh, where we uh, had a, a low um, i would say uh, activity and we adapt as well or, or union part or personal uh, which is quite good right now because we did win a lot of contracts uh, the last six months uh, which is good for the activity much better as we thought right now uh, and we're going to do for sure uh, quite well um, in the few months, in the, the, yeah, the next months. Uh, for the other activity, which are smaller, uh, I would talk about the sourcing airage, temporary uh, stuff, which is as well quite good in the general temporary stuff. Uh, we had a problem as well in the um, aeronautics temporary, uh, which which is uh, quite low in activity, but uh, overall it's much better. Your brand as well maintenance with uh, some problem in 2020 as well, which is getting much better. We did gain a lot of contract right now, which is good for the next months or the months coming. Thank you, boys. Um, so from the holding segment, uh, not much to say. Um, the saving is linked to a disposal of, uh, of a land where we made a three million gain. Uh, on the balance sheet side, I would say that uh, we have the strongest balance sheet ever with uh, 700 million uh, equity, uh, 196 million debt, which make a gearing of uh, 0 0.28 and um, on the debt flows, uh, you will see that uh, we have a, a leverage debt to EBITDA uh, of 0 0.5. Uh, so how is, are these flows made? We started with a debt uh, mounting to 341 million euros. Uh, we made 388 million EBITDA. We reinvested in the business uh, 122 million euros plus 29 uh, new IRFRS 16 right of use. 
which makes a 39% uh, reinvestment uh, of EBITDA into the business, which is uh, lower than the guidance uh, which gave a few months ago of 50% uh, on a multi-year basis. Um, but um, we will come back to that uh, on the next page. Uh, we have finance cost by 16, 17 million, which is 5 million more than last year, and it is linked to the bond which we issued in uh, June. We paid uh, 66 million income tax. I would say that we manage uh, quite well our working capital requirements because with a 46% 46, 46, uh, increase in revenue, we managed to have a flat uh, working capital requirement. Um, we, we were quite strict with our inventory monitoring and also with, uh, we, we made some uh, good uh, management with our um, factoring contract, uh, which enables us to direct nice receivables, uh, small external growth, and we are uh, with a debt of 196 million euros. Um, about the capex, so you will see that uh, we have a gross capex of 127 million euros. On the page before, it was 132 million because we made 5 million disposal. Um, um, so, 33% uh, uh, reinvestment if we take out the lease renewals. Um, I would say that uh, this number would have been higher if we didn't have uh, some delays in uh, delivering capex. What happens on the semiconductor size uh, impacts also our suppliers, and uh, we have some delays in uh, cranes deliveries and truck deliveries. It's a few millions. About uh, the big capex this year, we have a new post trading line uh, close to Poitiers. Uh, we have a significant capex in Spain uh, in order to bring the assets to group standards. Uh, in particular, some new uh, cranes, some uh, new uh, capex in the uh, aluminium refining facility, um, building a, a new furnace for lead refining. Um, and we have also some uh, trucks, uh, uh, but some trucks also in Canada and France for the waste collection activity. Uh, in the multi-service, we have, uh, we have a, a stable capex um, as each year. I will go very fast through the source of financing because there is uh, no uh, specific item to say unless that uh, we have a very, very good uh, liquidity headroom, uh, 1 billion euros. But of course, a part of that is linked to the bond which we issued in June, uh, 300 million euros. In, in, which is in escrow awaiting the closing of the ECO acquisition. We have also some good visibility on our credit lines. Uh, nothing specific to report about that, but we are happy that we have no major um, line to renew in the coming years. About the outlook, uh, the good market conditions, which we have seen last year, uh, they prevailed in October and November. A bit lower volumes, uh, but uh, very good margins. Um, after two months, uh, the results are better than last year. Um, we hope it continues in uh, December, which is uh, generally uh, a short month, I would say, because uh, around the 20th of the month, uh, we have some plans of our customer which make a break for the Christmas and reopen generally uh, near the 6th of January. Um, there are, however, some contradictory factors, um, some risks uh, that will not all crystallize, but with, which we look at and make the situation a little more risky than a few months ago. Of course, uh, you are aware of the cemetery situation, which may uh, have an impact of, on the global economy on which we are dependent. Um, the semiconductor uh, shortage we started uh, with the automotive industry, uh, it may progressively impact uh, upstream the industrial chain and come back to come up to our direct customers. And uh, the highly expensive energy prices uh, can lead also some of our customers to think about reducing their output or adapting their output in working only on night shifts. Um, 
what I say is that uh, if the sanitary situation worsens, uh, the economy will uh, slow down and the industry, uh, uh, the energy prices that will collapse. So uh, I would say it will be either high expensive prices and good sanitary situation, or it will be the, the contrary. But we will hope that not all this risk will crystallize. We remain, of course, confident in the fundamental of the group. Um, our, its solid financial structure, its uh, responsiveness uh, in time of crisis, and its proven ability to inc integrate new business in a market where demand for raw materials from recycling will remain strong. And also in, on the multi-service side, we remain confident uh, that the outsourcing uh, demand will continue with um, more demand also for uh, offers, which are include uh, ESG aspects and uh, more also digital aspects. And uh, the multi-service uh, uh, is uh, also focusing on, on that type of uh, offers. The next step uh, on January 27, uh, we will have our uh, annual January meeting of shareholders. We will have on the 20 May, 25th of May, our uh, H1 results. Uh, in one year, of course, uh, our 21-22 uh, results. And on January 23rd, 2023, the general meeting of next year. A few words about the ECOR acquisition. Uh, you see a map with the uh, ECOR uh, activities, which is active in France, in the Belgium, in uh, Switzerland, Hungary and Romania. Uh, ECOR is, uh, I would say, a player which is uh, comparable with the Richbourg. However, with a focus, um, um, more focus on the wholesale activity, trading activity, uh, they purchase uh, prepared scrap, uh, on their yards in uh, Antwerpen, and they sell it to uh, uh, to Turkey, to Vietnam, and to, to international trade. And it is a more significant part of their business uh, than we have. Uh, they have not issued their financial statement as of September 30th uh, yet, but uh, they are in the same business than we are, and uh, they have the same trend of, uh, we presume at least, it was a trend un until uh, June. They have the same trend of result than we have. A few words about the forecast of the timetable for the acquisition. You see the different dates. Uh, I would say that uh, on the October 26, we have uh, filed our notification of the uh, concentration at the European Commission. On the 25th of November, we made some uh, remedies proposal. Um, in order to obtain uh, the antitrust approval in phase one. We are exactly now uh, currently negotiating these remedies with the European Commission. And in order not to interfere with this negotiation, uh, we will communicate with more detail when the situation is uh, clearly determined. And you see on the right page uh, of the score, um, uh, right part of the page, uh, our expectations uh, for the decision in phase one and the closing of the transaction, end of December. Um, about the strategy of the group, um, I will not go into, Abderrahman, do you want to, to, to speak to that part? Or, but we will not go into each of these pages because otherwise we, uh, but it's more for your reference, um, but we can go uh, rapidly uh, until the page you want to comment or, well, I mean, I, I will go very quickly, you know, um, uh, I mean, our sector is very dynamic. I mean, the, I mean, the electric art furnace has a lot of future. A lot of uh, steel makers are sh shifting from uh, blast furnace to electric furnace, which is good for us and for the demand of the raw material. Uh, we have a, a good network in Europe now, thanks to Spain and to, to France. Uh, so this allow us, you know, to develop niche businesses. Um, uh, we are always looking forward to have 25 to 30 percent uh, in niche businesses who are highly uh, profitable. We are using the state of art uh, uh, material, you know, for uh, our uh, yards. Uh, we have a resilience with the two other activities which, which are 
contracts based, you know, long ter term contracts based over three years, military service and the uh, uh, household waste uh, collection. Uh, all, all we have also we enjoy also a uh, very experienced management senior management team okay and i would say uh, compared to our peers we have the highest profitability in the in the market so you you have uh, plenty of backup uh, at the end of the presentation um i would just uh, I would just uh, comment on one thing. Uh, it is on page uh, 32. Uh, it is uh, the co uh, contribution of the um, recycling, uh, which generates uh, a significant energy savings, but also um, saves many uh, carbon dioxide emissions. And you have a, a schedule on the left part of the page, which show you that it's not our data. It's calculated by the BIR, the Bureau International du Recyclage. Uh, which uh, gives a contribution uh, for each metal of the savings uh, of the recycling uh, way of manufacturing metals compared to the primary route. Um, you see, for example, that for aluminium, the energy savings um, it's 95% for the recycling and the carbon greenhouse gas emissions savings 92%. For the steel, which is of course the main metals, the saving in carbon dioxide savings it's 58%. And uh, for, the, uh, for the energy savings, it's 74%. So uh, at a time where uh, there is a urgency in, in reducing our uh, carbon uh, dioxide emissions, and normally by 5% 5, 5 per, year, per year, if we want to be in line with the Paris Agreement, uh, the recycling is a significant part to uh, achieving, uh, I would say, easily the first percent um, uh, of uh, re uh, decreasing our emissions. So uh, now we can uh, take some questions. Uh, you have uh, on the um, on the teams, you have uh, question marks, and where you can ask some questions through this uh, chat. Pierre, we, you have already a question uh, on your email. If you can uh, have a look at your email. Okay. Yes, there is a, a technical uh, question about uh, uh, result, uh, net result attributable to shareholders. Yes, it's net, uh, it's net results. Yes, uh, how the group, but numbers, the name has changed. Uh, there is a question about the remedies in the record transaction. Uh, as we explained, we are just uh, we will not answer these questions tonight uh, because we are we do not want to interfere. Uh, we do not want to put pressure either on the European Commission or on the group or or anybody else. Uh, currently, we will communicate separately when the uh, when the matters are are precisely determined, and uh, we are sorry for those who expect. Uh, accurate answer tonight, but uh, they will come within a few days. It will not be very long, but it will come within a few days. Um, there are some. Um, uh, there is an accurate question, uh, a continuing question, uh, I would say about the impact of IFRS 16, about uh, EBITDA and debt. Uh, the impact of IFRS 16 is 21 million on EBITDA and 58 million on uh, debt. Uh, the ferrous margin, uh, the unit margin increased both in ferrous and non ferrous, yes. Uh, question. Um, uh, there is also, uh, I would say, a specific question about the ACOR transaction. Uh, we will answer also uh, within a few days to, to, to that question. Yeah. I, I would like that the question tonight uh, please focus on the Dirichbourg group. Uh, 
Uh, with such a strong operational performance, uh, what will your strat financial strategy be in the short to medium term if the net debt deleveraging continues? Uh, you have on the page 40 of the presentation, um, uh, I would say our guidance for our financial policy. Uh, we we intend to continue the leveraging uh, after the record transaction, as we did after the Lirsa acquisition. Indeed, we deleverage more rapidly than we expected. We have a dividend policy, um, which is to pay uh, a 30 percent net income uh, dividend, and uh, it is what we do this year. This year, and we want also to to keep a strong liquidity position. Uh, I would say that uh, we do not have an aggressive financial policy. Uh, we do not want, uh, and, uh, it, is, it is a strategy of the main shareholder. They do not want to um, to make an aggressive return to shareholder. Of course, they want to pay a yearly dividend, but they also want to invest in the business. And uh, the group has a more than 60 year history, and they want uh, still to be there uh, in 60 years. And uh, it's a long term strategy to invest in the business, to, to have also some uh, external growth where, when the, there are some good opportunities and that the multiples are reasonable. Uh, so there will not be, uh, I would say, a, a specific dividend for one year. Uh, so on page 40, you can see our policy. Uh, what? I wanted just to add that I mean, uh, for the short term, uh, our main objectives is you know the integration of the Ecor Group, and to reduce our debt. Uh, there is a question of uh, about the level of uh, EBITDA margin for Lirsa in 2021. Uh, I do not have the accurate uh, figures with me. But I would say that it is at least the percentage uh, of the division of the recycling division, and maybe. Uh, yeah, I would say that it has improved, and uh, I don't know if we have said that. We now, uh, we, we yeah, we, we said that uh, Spain has been the, the main contributor to the EBITDA of the group. So I mean, you know, the the, the performance of uh, Spain has been outstanding. Um, and they have improved their unit margin. They have reduced their stock. Uh, we have been able, you know, uh, to restructure the company. I mean, from six uh, legal entities, we have merged all the entities in one, and we have been able to implement the synergies in, on the commercial side between the group, uh, mainly in France and Spain. And this is why, and there are still some results to come because, I mean, we have invested uh, in some niche businesses, uh, one is the uh, a second uh, lead furnace uh, in the city of Saragos, and one is in the Wii, the waste of uh, electrical and electronic equipment, and these uh, uh, capex will be implemented by June, July. So the results of these capex will, I mean, we will see the results of these capex by summer. Uh, we have a, a continuing question about the factoring. Uh, so you have the, the answer on page um, 18. Uh, we draw the, nearly fully the factoring line, uh, 299 million, and the contribution to the debt was 23 million. So the, the direct recognition is uh, 276 million euros. Um, can you quantify the wind the windfall effects you benefited on your inventory at the closing? Uh, so is, we, <laughs> I mean, you know, to give a, a exact number, it is very difficult because I mean, it's you know the the first prices increase uh, on a monthly basis. Okay, so it's very difficult to measure their impact, and the non first it's on a daily basis. So there is definitely a benefit because I mean, over the last year we had seen a lot of increases in both first and the non first. To measure, you know, the impact on the results, it's very difficult. 
And there is a question as, a, as a, we said that we have a slightly lower volume over the first uh, two months. Uh, it's less than minus 10%. It's a one digit decrease. And this is mainly come from, you know, the car industry. As you all know, the car industry, I mean, the sector is uh, slowing down. Uh, we are uh, seeing uh, around 15 to 20 percent in our production uh, decrease. And uh, um, at the same time, we have the and light vehicles that are decreasing. And this is the segment of the market that is missing to our industry. We are ob yeah. obviously very confident that in the future, I mean, you know, the semiconductor issue or the chip issue will be resolved by the second half of the the year, the 2022. Uh, and we are confident that we will find back, you know, the volume that we have lost during the, the last uh, six or seven months. Uh, there is an interesting question. I do not say that the other one I'm not interesting, but uh, this one is um, uh, can the scrap prices remain uh, high and uh, I would say a bit uh, uh, decorated from the economic cycle and stay very high uh, because there would be a strong demand for ferro scrap uh, in a context of uh, where steel makers would want to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions. I would add uh, that there are a lot of projects. One of them is Arcelor, you know, the uh, steel maker, number one steel uh, maker in, in, in the world, to switch to, or to shift his production from blast furnace to electric furnace. And the, the project is in Belgium. So instead of the blast furnace that the, is producing currently 4 million tons, he will switch to two electric arc furnaces of 2 million each. So the demand in you know in the coming years will increase by four million tons so the demand will maintain the prices at a very high level so we are confident in the future that the prices of the scrap will remain at a good level um a question um if we can quantify uh, the impact on the 2021 ebitda uh, of the prices increase and uh, and uh, if we expect to continue to improve our results in 2022. Um, I would say that we can uh, quantify the improvement in our margins. Uh, it's uh, somewhere in the presentation. It's a high number, but it's difficult to say if it's only prices increase or as uh, Abderrahman said, also a bit change in the uh, structure of the market where there would be more demand for recycled materials and uh, which would enable better margin on that product. Uh, to be honest, we do not have the answer to that question yet. But I mean, in our presentation, we have seen that uh, the margin improvement comes from two origins one is the unit margin and the other one is up from volume so it's not only unit margin it's also from volume uh, there is a question uh, for the multi-service about the how is inflation impacting for the business for staff and costs boys if you want to put on your microphone yes uh... What do you mean? Uh, uh, what's going to be the impact? You said, Pierre, on the or on the yeah, cost, uh, on, on, your cost the, on your cost the side, uh, is there a lot of pressure for in, in increasing uh, wages in the negotiation with the FEP? And uh, and how do you intend to, to it goes to your customers? Yes, we 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 do have two main uh, things that. Uh, we should be very uh, careful. The first one is, is going to be the cost on the labor cost, because uh, as as you see, the group did uh, quite good results. So that's been the labor uh, or the unions going to be a part of uh, of it and ask for maybe more. But you know, we we do have in France, um, on, capé, you know, with the federation. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah, capped uh, the price around. I guess we're gonna have two percent uh, average on different activities. Uh, 
so that means that then once we're going to have this, that we know it already, uh, we're going to see our client uh, ask to the client to, we're going to ask uh, as well the same increase that we do have in the labor cost. And if we don't have it, uh, that means we're going to have to work on the uh, labor as well to decrease uh, or mass salarial. You, you, you should help me with uh, mass salarial. Our, uh, wage expense. Yes, that we will have to reduce our wage uh, expense if we can't uh, uh, have the, the price uh, with our clients. So it won't be, I guess, a problem. Um, we used to it in this kind of activity. Uh, we have two solutions. The first one, like I said, we, we, we can increase our client and if we can't, we will have to uh, decrease our, our labor cost. And uh, like I said, we used to it, so it won't be a problem anyway. And then uh, you did ask the question as well to uh, the main problem we do have right now. We do have we renew quite a lot of contracts. We are quite uh, aggressive as well on organic growth. So that's mean that we need to find a lot of people right now in different sectors like aeronautics. Uh, for example, we're looking for 300 people right now in the aeronautics part because we did sign quite a lot of, co lot of contracts. So that's mean we we organize the group as well with uh, uh, different people to looking for some more more people uh, in the aeronautics. We're looking for as well a lot of people in the uh, army, which is quite good for us because uh, there is quite a lot of people there. So our, our main problem, uh, our main problem right now is to uh, find people uh, to uh, to achieve our contract. But same, uh, we used to it. Uh, we used to increase our, our, our people year after year and we never had any problem with it. So it's a bit more uh, complicated right now, but uh, we'll do the job anyway. I don't know if I answered the, the question, Pierre, but, uh, but it Thank won't you. be any yeah, problem. Yeah. Thank you, Boris. Uh, you answered the questions. Uh, so I don't see uh, any additional question uh, that we can answer tonight. Um, so if there is no more question, uh, so we thank you very much for attending this uh, this call. Uh, we will uh, you have the press release which is available on our website, the slideshow which is also very available on our website. Our annual report it will be available within one week to ten days, uh, and. Uh, and we uh, for our shareholders uh, there is a general meeting on January 27th and uh, maybe additional uh, press release from the group uh, in coming days. Um, thank you very much for attending this call and uh, see you soon. Wish you bye. all a very good evening and thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.